So it's time for some tips. And what I thought I'd start off with tonight is, oh, by the way, I'm Tifa Snow. I figured you figured that out since you were on here and sort of curious. So I'm gonna show you something and I'll let Abby get a close up of it. Come on in. Sort of an interesting thing. Hmm. It was a gift from uh, someone when I was in Poland and it's Baltic Amber. Mm. And Baltic Amber, or Amber in general, is one of the really interesting things you can find in the world. Each piece is totally unique. Uh, it always has some inclusions in it. In other words, something that got trapped in there and its sap comes out of a tree and then more runs over top and, and it hardens up. But they're always somewhat interesting. Um, and so what we're gonna talk about is when somebody who's living with dementia is pretty much in an amber state. Uh, what it means, we'll, we'll just go over what would that would mean. So they are living with binocular vision, but the thing about their visual field, so they can take in about this much data at a time. The thing is, if they're a curious person, they just keep moving this around so they can find stuff. And when they find good stuff with their eyes, it's not always clear that they know what it is that they found and how you use the thing that you find. And so I'm gonna give you an example of what might happen because the other place that we see amber is in a stoplight sequence. So you see uh, a red light, a green light, a uh, yellow light, and the yellow light is called amber. And so when the light turns yellow, like it usually is a green light and it turns yellow. What are you supposed to do? Speed up. <laughs> well, yeah, some people do because you're trying to make it through the light. Um, but some, what you're, you know very well you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put your foot on the brake because it's about to be a red light. So it's, a, it's called a caution light. It, it tells you you should pause and take a look and see what's going on. The thing about someone living in an amber state is they really have no caution. <laughs> they don't have safety awareness. So they're the ones that are gonna speed up. So if they see something and they're really interested in it, they're going for it. So they have this visual field thing that's going on, but they also have, you know, how do I use this? So you will often see them use their hands to sort of check things out, scope things out. Now, the other thing they may be curious about is they may use their mouth more because when they explore it with their hands, if they still aren't sure what it might exactly be or what it might taste like or what it might feel like, they'll bring it up to their mouths to check it out. Now, sometimes it's truly just checking it out and sometimes it means they might try to eat things that aren't actually things to eat. Um, they might try to do things with stuff that makes us uncomfortable, particularly if they've been doing something involving eating and then we're trying to get them to do something else. Um, they may misinterpret our cues and think we're wanting them to eat something else and so they try. And it's like, uh-oh, that's a bit of a challenge because what happens when they do things that surprise us, our brain goes, oh, oh, no, 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 no. And we get really sensory. So instead of going, caution, we try to put the brakes on and we slam on the brakes. But if somebody's actually speeded up to get through the light and you put the brakes on, we're very likely gonna have a collision or rear end somebody, or they're gonna try to get away and you're gonna find yourself chasing them, which is not ideal um, because they don't have safety awareness. And that means the other place they aren't quite as good at as they used to be is on their feet. They can seem like they're really pretty good, and they are, except when we have something in the environment that they're missing. So if they're watching you, they're not watching their feet. If they're looking at an object on a tabletop, they don't know what's between them and it. So this is where it gets risky. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate what this might look like. Oh, one other thing, language-wise, they're much better at maybe the, oh yeah, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> Well, yeah, if you can see it and you'll get it and that will be all of it. Um, so I might say things, but there might be a rhythm to it and it seems like I'm making some sense. I might still articulate, but you're like, what is she talking about? <laughs> yeah. And then I go, well, now that's, oh yeah, I like that. And it's like, you like what? The thing. Uh-huh, what they, well, you know, all of it. Well, it's just all of it. And it's like, but I could also say, I said, no, now that's it. Now that's, a, that's, that's, that's all now. Don't, 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 don't. And then I go into four letter words, 
which we know I better not do because if I do stuff like that, we'll get cut off. So I'm, I'm happy to use them. <laughs> but to talk doesn't like it. So, okay. Unless you do it Unless in a song. Singing. Right. We're singing a lot. Of a lot of people are just yeah. saying thank you and that they've really loved you over the years. Oh, so thanks. Before you keep going. But. Thanks, everybody. It's good to be liked. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you don't like me. You just love what I have to, I don't know. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some examples. So somebody who is maybe, you know, really, so what did you just see that I did? I stood up. Did I have any trouble standing up? Mm-hmm. Did it have anything to do with what I was doing with my hands? No, I just decided I was done sitting. So I stood up. So what that means is, oh, all of a sudden I'm getting up. Now, there might have been a table in front of me, which I may have shoved out of the way or just sat up and knocked a chair over. And it's like, (laughs) no big deal, because I don't have that awareness. Now, you could be freaking out already, because it's like, tipa, tipa. You just broke your hip. You want to sit down. I can't be up like this. Oh, God, here she comes again. Get it, get it. it. And now that happened quick. Because what you missed was Manda was messing with this hand that I had something and she's fiddling and I warned her a couple times, get your hands off me. And I didn't back up. And she didn't back up because she was worried. But by doing that, she actually increased the risk. Now, she's over on the side. Remember, I have binocular vision and I'm not even paying attention to her. She's coming out of nowhere. So let's do it again. Tifa. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey. Well, hey. <laughs> How are you? Well, I've got this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so at this moment, nice job. She called my attention. She gave me time to trace her because I was really looking at my thing. My eyes had to go from this thing to those things. And then from those things, I passed up. But she had her hand out there so I could find it. And I looked at it, and I still wanted this more than I wanted that. And then I, hey, and yeah, I was sort of curious, but then as soon as she made contact, that wasn't what I was looking for. So to keep me safer, um, she put her hand on my shoulder and stabilized me at the shoulder. Because that's, I'm less aware of that. I don't bother me. I'm busy here, I'm busy here, I'm busy there. So if she just keeps her hand there, if I start to tip, yeah, mm-hmm. I got it, you got it. Got that. And now when I'm up and on my hip, my brain might go, well, that's not comfortable. But I don't know cause and effect. So what don't I know that Manda knows? You just broke your hip and it's probably hurting for you to stand Uh, on it. Yeah, especially since I leaned forward and stood up on it and stuff. And oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, She can't tell me all that. Yelling at me, explaining it to me, none of that's going to make any sense. So what she did... Oh, man. That's yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Now, it is super obvious to you, and it's super obvious to Amanda. She wants me to sit in the chair. I still don't know. <laughs> I still wasn't my cue. I still can't figure that out because Ambers are caught in a moment of time. And so what she could try is hand me something to drink. Oh. And what she's managed to do now, did y'all see that? It was pretty subtle. She actually got me to do a little turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. So and just so sort of guiding. She was just yeah. sort of guiding there and, and she, push, and she a... moved the cup. And so to keep the cup in the middle of my field, I turned my body a little bit. Now, this is the part where learning how to help people sit comes in pretty handy. So she's going to move her hand down to my hip. And what she's going to do is lean forward. Oh, well, the the weight, this, oh, well, move, get it. This here, there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better? Yeah. Now, what's that? Tifa, something to drink. Oh, this what? Drink. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh cheers that's a pretty one you like that one yeah cheers oh did you, did you drink it mm-hmm. oh 
Oh, that tastes like shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Wave. It's a moment, you know, and so you've got to let go of that thing. Now, notice I still have this, but it switched to my non-dominant hand. So what I am interested in is in my dominant. This is in my non-dominant, but without realizing I haven't let go of it. So I will be a collector. I often collect a lot of stuff. People <laughs> call it hunting and gathering. So I'm doing it. So you got to decide, are you going to give me something I can put it in? Or are you going to have me carry things around and get more and more stuff and then not know what to do with it and become distressed? So, you know, trying to figure out what we can do with this, I might have some ideas. So what I might start doing is, is putting in my clothing. Mm -hmm. And I'll put it where it's easy to reach and easy to do. And then I just sort of get more and more stuff. So as I go around, I find things. Oh, yeah. Now that's one. See that? Don't put it on. Huh? Put it on. Put it on. Yep, put, put it, it on. on. Yep, I got it. This is this thing, see this? And I mean, you can put it here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and now that was automatic. So that was when I held it out here, my brain finally went, oh, I know what you can do with this. Now I totally missed that it has that upper part, but for right now, Am I doing anything that's problematic? Nope, so far so good. Yeah, and so, yeah, I put something else on, but it's not really a problem. Now, where it gets to be an issue is when I start messing with stuff you don't need me to. So, <laughs> make sure you get a good close up. What we got here, let's see. This hand sanitizer, oh, it is so good. And I found it. It will be it. super clean. And Since we just did a drink of juice stuff. that you didn't like. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. That's, that's not good. But yet, no. going back for more. <laughs> so this is that moment where your brain is going, ah! Poison control. Do I need to call poison control? It's like, what does it say? I can't even get to the label. Got it. I know I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what I got. I got a little ethanol, ethyl alcohol. All right. Oh, You'll yeah. be super you know, we used to clean. do, you know, we used to drink this stuff. Oh, who said that about when I was young? Never oh. mind. Put it in watermelon. I mean, there's all kinds of things people used to do when they were young. It's not healthy. It's not something you want me doing. But in this moment, if we evaluate, you know, we evaluate the risk. Me taking a sip of that, just a little, it's just in my mouth. Do you really want to try to get it out of my hand where I scratch you, you hurt me, I'm bruised, I don't like you, I'm screaming. And then you want to help me do something later on, like take my clothes off or take a shower. High probability you're not going to be successful because although I don't remember what happened, I know I don't like you anymore. I don't trust you anymore. You're mean. And so as soon as I no, 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 don't you, don't you, don't you. And it's like, I just walked in the room. Oh, you, you get out now. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. You get out. Oh, boy. And what it's called is anticipatory distress. And what we forget is that people who are living with dementia have a primitive brain. And the primitive brain is designed to try to keep you alive. And so if you have felt threatened, that primitive brain tries to remind you, oh no, that's threatening. Don't, don't go there. That's a, that's a dangerous place. Don't be with her. She's a dangerous person. And the reality is what might have happened might not have been dangerous, but if her brain had is overreacting. And so now I hold on to everything and I hide more and more stuff. And now you're especially if I look like I want And if the more she looks at it, the more no, it's mine. Just no, that's not yours. You took this from somebody else's room and this is not yours. That's your that's mine. My daddy daddy, daddy gave yours. me that and you just don't even and so now I I don't trust her at all. And I'm hiding all kinds of things on my person. Because that's about the only place I, I know I can keep up with it because I get so lost in the world 
as I move around, I don't know where I am. I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I've, I can go. And so it's always a world of exploration. And if I'm a risk taker, I'm exploring a lot. If I'm not, I just sit quiet. And people say she doesn't do anything. And you want like, something to drink? No, I'm okay. You want anything to eat? Yeah, no, not right now. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. And I'm low sensory um, because I just can't get engaged. Now, so let's let's work on this one. So I have this and I'm doing this and you get have to get your brain in a good place, which is, yeah, I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's the third time I've seen it today. <laughs> and got also rough. that moment where you go, Oh, Who left out of the room again? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that in what here. It's like, how did they get out again? I thought I had that away. I can find things. I mean, I find stuff. I'm a really good, curious person. When I find it, I pick it up. When I find something else, I set that down because I found something else. So things move around a lot. Let it go. Yeah. You can rearrange it later. you got to quit fussing about stuff. Now, one of the things you can do is if you have several surfaces, what you can do is just drop something over this one. Put in some, uh, of course, missed the one thing I wanted to cover. <laughs> but simply dropping something over buys you time, buys me the opportunity. Now, I may get curious about this and go investigating, but my focus is here. <laughs> so while I'm investigating here, what could happen is I'm looking here and I'm looking at all, oh, that's good. Is that a oh. good one? Yeah. Oh. I got that it. one's for for Tifa. Yeah. That one's for here. That's for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Gotta take it off. Oh uh huh. Now, man. <laughs> to just ignore this behavior because fussing about her trying to get it back out. Now, if I take this one, this is the one that this was, is the this, one that I'm most concerned yeah, about. I, I have to be least concerned because who's the one that handed it to me? Nobody. You found it over there. The knife you found. I didn't give it to you. I oh, did not give you the knife. You, you were searching for things. Oh, you found okay. the knife. So what our brains would say these two go together. And yet, for me, that may not line up at all. And so what I, I want is to do what? Tuck That's them both boring. in your shirt. <laughs> That's boring. This, however, looks interesting. All right. So what am I going to have to do to investigate this one? Put that down. Put it down? Put it somewhere else. Oh, yeah. That I will have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gives me silverware for lunchtime. How am I supposed to eat my lunch? Yeah. Have so, you checked your you know, shirt? So this is one place I might put it. The other place that some people put them mm -hmm. are up their sleeves. And so you find wads and wads of Kleenex or silverware or crayons or markers shoved up paper towels. sleeves. Paper towels. Mm -hmm. Use tissues. Use yeah. tissues. All kinds of stuff. Because I don't want to lose it. But then once it's out of sight, I don't actually remember I've got it. So, you know, the only time I notice it is when it falls out or something happens. But what I really wanted to do was this. Oh. Now, this is the moment again. Oh, what I'm pointing out is when you're living with somebody who's curious and in an amber state, this is your day. This is 24 hours. Any moments I'm awake... You're just going, oh my God, what is she getting into now? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So your brain gets a little worn out with these. Boom, boom. And you can. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get a gift from my brother? Can I have it? Can I have it? No, this one? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh, you found yeah. something. There we go. <sighs> now, is there? I mean, again, that's I'm pretty sorry. Yeah. 
Not is this thinking. dangerous or is it risky? Risky only if you can manage getting that down. Yeah, pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So what are this one instead? No, oh, that one you'll give me. <laughs> She's done with that one. Yeah, thanks. thanks. So this is that situation where the lesser of two evils, the lesser of three evils, um, the idea of I need things to fill my day. I need things to do with my hands. Every time I do something with my hands, I'm preserving function. Every time I engage in curiosity, my brain is working. Now, this is where you're going to get tired and I'm going to get tired. The issue is, are we enjoying one another or are you just ready to tear your hair out? And I really, really get to a place where you do not like me anymore. Um, now, let me give you one more possibility. It's peanut butter. <laughs> That one's not good, huh? Got a crunchy one in there. What yeah. Kind of peanut butter. Uh -huh. Oh. Great. So this could be the pills that you guys put in the applesauce. I have an idea about our next pudding. activity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so those of you out there are starting to think about, okay, well, how could I engage Tifa? And then a cleanup process. Because now you have a new job to do, then you're on the right track. Because yeah. this is not my job to now figure out if I can figure out a way that we can do this together. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. just maybe, it's less of you sitting around yeah. and waiting on you hand and foot. And me, you getting frustrated when I find something else to do while you're trying to clean this up. Right. So there's nothing wrong with me getting down on the floor and scrubbing on things. It's nothing really wrong with me taking a mop and going back and forth. The thing we have to recognize is you've got to fill my time. Or I'll fill my time with things <laughs> you don't like. Mm -hmm. And the time that this is going to make sense to try to take things out is when we're coming out of clothes for one reason or another. Going to the bathroom and all the stuff falls yeah. out of your pants. You're like, where yeah. did all this stuff come from? Yeah. Well, you don't know, but hmm. I'm going to do a big sweep <laughs> <laughs> with a towel so you don't re engage with the things. <laughs> uh -oh. So, what am I missing now? What do I get, but I don't know? The blue one. This one? No. Oh, yeah. I got it. Got it? Mm hmm. Good. Let's go put it away. I got it. Does it fit? Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Hey, Tifa. Yeah. Come with me. Come with you. Okay. <laughs> one more for the road. For the road. <laughs> and so this is where, you know, if you take me out in public, you've got to be taking me to a restaurant that gets it and is willing to work with you. So you want to be at a place where when I gather things that they go, bring it back tomorrow. And it's like, I will. You know, <laughs> sugar packets, silverware, napkins. I mean, I will on the way pass things I might collect. Poker um, chips, memory poker cards, chip, yeah. baby socks, sorting I mean, things. And the thing is, when I get home in another environment and there's an opportunity, I might take things out oh, and yeah. I might lay them down. Put them right there. Put them no, right I got them. You got yeah. them. Yeah. All right. And then without realizing it, now I've got other things. And it takes like a village. I mean, we've got, yeah, it's just like, so you know it was there before. I don't remember. I may look for a minute and then go, I was looking at something. You were looking. Oh, is it this one or something else? Oh, this. No, that one. All right. Oh, and then you yeah. get home at the end of the day and you're like, what is all this stuff in my pockets? <laughs> oh, my it's like, oh. So you hunt and gather too. You just don't call it that. And that's one of those tricky parts. So um, I wanted to dig into that a little bit because that is, it is a very tough time in dementia. 
Um, because as I'm doing all this, I'm also getting to where I really don't like the sensory experiences of getting clean, of getting my teeth cleaned, of getting my hair messed with, of getting my face messed with, of getting my fingers dealt with. And so very frequently, what I used to allow without too much trouble, like fingernails management and cleaning my fingers and hands and my, me washing my own face and cleaning myself up, now is getting to be a little more problematic. And so really that technique of hand under hand, really modifying to match me a little bit at a time is going to become a really critical thing. And looking at the environment, and are there dangerous things that need to move out? And when is it just our sensitivity to risk that's getting in our way? So might we want to put a alarm up high on the door and maybe a safety latch up high on the door? Yeah, because it's less likely I'll find it. I mean, it's not like most of us have a lot of experience of a safety latch up high on the door. It does allow you a moment of time to get to where you want to be to help me get through the door. Don't be thinking about stopping me, but thinking about giving yourself a pause button so that you can get in the right position to help me out. It's not opening. Hmm, let me see if I can figure it out. Now, you want to keep me busy doing something while you reach up because I can learn things. <laughs> and usually I don't hold on to stuff, but don't turn on it. Um, let's we, see. Had a, we had a question kind of okay. early on of somebody who um, has vascular dementia and is claiming that people are stealing things, um, family especially, but just right. stealing things. Yeah, so if we think about having um, a brain change that comes with blood supply problems, so especially if this is episodic, so she does it and then she doesn't do it, and then she does it and she doesn't do it. Let's say I've had a routine that I always keep my peanut butter in that location. I mean, that's where it always is. And now I'm worried that somebody's going to steal my peanut butter because it's gone missing before. Now, what I will do, and this is where, you know, you want to know the difference between immediate recall, recent memory, and long-term memory. Crystallized knowledge and episodic memories of my life. Really complicated terms. Immediate recall means as I'm doing something and as I do something, and then I turn around. Where did that peanut butter go? It was right here. Now, all of us who are here living without this dementia know exactly what just happened. I picked up the peanut butter, I took it over there, and I put it under that under that uh, apron. Well, and sometimes even with a normal we all brain, have you would have <laughs> that moment of, what the hell? Where did Where's I go? Peanut butter? And it's like... Oh yeah, wait a minute. I was just, where was I? Yeah, so it's that tracing your pathway, remembering where you've just been. What was I just doing? We've all said it. But now I look here and it's not there. And I know it, I always keep it here. And so my brain goes, well, where could it have gotten to? And what? <laughs> well, she did it. Where did you put my peanut butter? <laughs> Your peanut butter? Yeah. What are you talking about? Why do you keep stealing my peanut butter? If you want peanut butter, get your own peanut butter. I just got here. You stole my peanut butter. I, I just, I, you, you did not. Don't me. tell me you didn't just do it. I watched you. You, you. Now, whoa, wait a minute. Where did that come from? I watched you take it. <laughs> well, what am I, what am I sort of remembering, but not exactly remembering accurately? It got moved for sure. <laughs> it got moved and there was a hand that moved it. Mm -hmm. And I see her, but what I'm not doing is correctly synapsing. So what I'm doing is seeing a memory of that peanut butter going somewhere. Somebody took it. I don't associate it with myself. And God I forbid I'm the one that finds it when I'm cleaning. See? Well, here it is. This is where you put it. What are you talking about? You put it over there. That's what I'm saying. I watched you. You think I don't know what you're doing. You're hiding things so you can walk out of here at the end of the day. Peanut butter? Well, you took toilet paper too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's enough when it is something of value. And what it means if it's something of value, ooh, boy, we didn't do a good job thinking of substitution soon enough. Mm -hmm. But in this case, one of the things you want to do is, somebody took my peanut butter. Somebody took your peanut butter. You, you took it. 
Oh, you were thinking it was me. Yeah. Oh, geez. why do you do that stuff? Oh, I had it right here. And you it's always gone. keep it there. Yes. And it's not there. No. <sighs> so wow, I, that is frustrating. Yeah, did you take it? You're looking for it. Yeah, I am. Should we look around and see if we can find it? Well, or? I sure as hell want to find it. Yeah. Well, it's my peanut butter. It's my one container of it. Oh, shoot. Yeah. All right. Where, where would you where would you even look for it? Well, I'm not sure. It looks like uh, I'll say here. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe over here. Here? Lift up some things. See if it's gotten under something. Well, there's a whole bunch of shit over here. Yeah. Well, see, this is where somebody put it. Oh, geez. It could have could have well been me. I am so sorry. Well, don't move stuff. I won't. I am so That's sorry. That's what irritates me. You people think you walk in here and do whatever you want to. Leave it there. Absolutely. Guess what's going to happen again? You're going to hide it from yourself? I will hide it from myself because I'm still worried about somebody taking things I value. And so this is a frustrating place to be. Um, the only thing I know to say is it's not her, it's the dementia. And it is hard. I mean, it is so hard to feel like somebody's getting really angry with you and you didn't really do anything. So what we might want to... But wanna... if I know in my heart of hearts that I did not steal the peanut butter... But pointing it out to you isn't going to no, help, but all not. I can do is acknowledge that if somebody's stealing from you, that's wrong, and we shouldn't be yeah. doing that, and I'm sorry it feels like that when we yeah. come over. Yeah, and I would also recommend buying four or five things of this peanut butter, and just being able to say, here you go, I don't know how it got here, I am so sorry it happened. Get the substitutions ready. So this might be another purse that looks like that purse, another pair of socks, a shirt, whatever it is that she's really worried about people taking. Um, it's not easy. It's a tough place to be. And it could also be that we really- I'm changing things for you and you don't, and I come in and every time I come in, I'm telling you, well, You're this is a mess. mess. Why and are you, you keep fussing with my stuff? stuff and so when messy. stuff goes, oh. uh -huh. So she keeps handling my stuff and my brain doesn't like that. And so that's why she's the one that's stealing stuff, which there's an element of her doing something. It's just not exactly what it was. So one final thing that I wanted to share out, because I meant to do it another time and I sort of forgot about it. Um, let's say somebody is in this state and what they're really doing a lot of is picking because this can become an issue where they have scabs and then they just keep picking the scabs. Every time they pick the scabs, we've got a new scab and they've got blood all over the place. And so this picking and, and doing things with scabs, one of the things to consider doing is to take a tube sock and these are just usual tube socks. And what you might want to do, turn it up inside out, and you want to cut out the toe part, and you want to cut out a hole for the thumb. And you actually want to put this on the individual, and you want to put it on the skin right above their skin. Oh, first thing, though, lotion. Put a thick coat, a heavy coat of lotion on their skin. And the reason I want a pretty decent thick coat of lotion, I might also really look at some of the, if they're wearing bracelets or something, look at seeing if you can get those things off because that may be just enough stimulation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And get it all the way up my arm. So we would do this before we get the shirt on. And then she's gonna help put this on. Uh, and you want it wrong side out. Okay, and she's gonna bring it all the way up my arm. Yeah, well, the problem is I already have a shirt on. So we'll just bring it here. Okay. And what it does is it allows me to mess and pick. And the reason you want the inside of the sock on the outside is it has all these little textured things. And so I can fiddle and mess and, and mess around with this and mess around with a lot of things. But what am I not doing that you're most actually, that's riskiest and actually the most dangerous? damaging your skin. I'm not picking my own skin with my fingers that have been everywhere else mm -hmm. that you're trying to keep me from hurting. And the reason you want that thick layer of lotion on there um, is to really protect my skin even more so. So I just wanted to cover that one because we haven't, oh, I meant to talk about it another time, but I totally forgot. 
So that's the stuff for the night. <laughs> So we have a lot of people asking about some like shower tips kinds of things, which uh -huh. we have a few videos about on TikTok. And we also have some great videos on YouTube. If you go to our profile um, and check out our YouTube site, we have lots of information about supporting bathing, supporting getting clean and supporting showering. Um, we have a TikTok live we did a couple weeks ago that should be posted on our YouTube page, mm -hmm. hopefully tomorrow, that has some more tips about how to get that conversation started, especially if you're getting a lot of refusals. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll also plan to do some more work on showers because we know that personal care, changing clothes, showering, bathing, foot care, hand care, all those are challenges. Um, but what you also recommend is starting out here where yeah. we're not starting doing anything, doing this level of, of lotion on a hand can indicate whether or not she's going to let me be with her when we're doing something, something like a shower. Yeah. Right. So putting something on is a lot often less scary than taking stuff off. And sometimes so, you've talked about starting yeah, down here. Starting down here at the feet area. After yeah. we've done hands, we can do, if you'll let yeah. me take your sock off. Mm -hmm. or, or I'll take my sock off and let you touch my feet. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, again, it's all about permission. It's all about being more tuned in to not asking, can I, but showing people and then saying, ooh, let's try this and see if you can get a try. Because trying is not agreeing to everything. It's just, we can try something. Can I, can I try something? And we'll be live again on Sunday. Um, we'll be live at Solta's Place at 5.30 Eastern time. So if you have more questions, bring them. Um, otherwise, we'll try to get some specific videos out yeah. over the next couple weeks. Um, and more people had questions about someone who constantly wanders, who's constantly in motion. We did a mm -hmm. little bit touched on that on one of the recent lives as well, which should be posted on our YouTube page. Um, and we'll continue to address those. And the rest of the questions, we've been trying to keep track of questions as they come up because it's just hard to get to all of them as they're popping up. And there's so many good questions. So we're trying to document all of those as we're going along. And if we didn't get to your question during this live, we will continue to try to answer those. Thank you all. And thanks for being here. Thanks for stopping in, being curious. And thank you for taking care of folks and really being the folks you are. And for people living with dementia, we're standing up for you um, because we think it's only fair. It's hard enough to do this stuff. Hi, I'm Tifa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www tifasnow.com where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.